Today I'm riding first class from Tokyo to Kyoto on the Japanese bullet train Shinkansen. First class is also called green car, but is the green car worth the extra money? Join me for the whole experience today on Marcus Travels. I just checked out of the capsule hotel here in Shibuya and the lady at the desk, as she was checking me out, and the lady working the front desk, she noted that I wasn't apparently too happy about the fact that I'm going to Kyoto next. But she said the most wonderful thing as I left for the lift, she said, I hope it doesn't suck. So that's the vibe that I'm putting out today. Well, I hope it doesn't suck. I'm really looking forward to this uh, Shinkansen trip to Kyoto right now. My journey today begins in Shibuya, home of the world-famous five-way crossing. In fact, it's the busiest pedestrian intersection in the world. I'm standing here looking out over the famous Shibuya crossing with the massive number of people crossing the streets every which way on a normal busy day. Today it's a Saturday, so it's a little bit more quiet. I'm gonna head down to the Shibuya station to get my ticket over to Kyoto on the Shinkansen bullet train. Shibuya is also where you will find the comedy club where I performed the Tokyo Comedy Bar. There are two stations in Tokyo where you can board the Shinkansen bullet train to Kyoto. One is Tokyo Station, but because I'm in the western part of the city today, I'll catch the train at Shinagawa Station. It's a short local train ride from Shibuya to Shinagawa Station. The trip from Tokyo to Kyoto is about 470 kilometers, and on the bullet train it only takes two hours. The price I paid for this green car ticket was 19,040 Japanese yen, which is around $140 US. The price for the ordinary car or a second class would have been just over $100 US. Welcome to my channel, Marcus Travels. Here's the easiest way to buy a ticket for the Shinkansen train. Just follow the signs to the dedicated Shinkansen ticket machines. They have instructions in English, they accept credit cards, and they're very easy to use. When you buy your ticket, the machine will ask you if you want to buy space for extra luggage. The luggage space on the trains is limited. If you accept the offer for extra luggage, it'll give you a seat in the back row, and behind that back row there is extra space for bigger bags. I only had my Osprey backpack on this trip, and it goes with me everywhere, and I do recommend that you try to travel light in Japan. To get to the train, you will have to go through two sets of ticket gates. To pass through the gate, just insert your ticket here, pass through, and then collect your ticket on the other side. In case you're in the wrong place or your ticket is not valid, the gate will close, otherwise it remains open. The first set is to enter the ordinary departure area of the station. From there, just follow the signs to the Shinkansen departure platforms. It's all very clearly marked. Sometimes they even have this very obvious blue line in the floor. To enter the dedicated Shinkansen tracks, you will have to go through a second ticket gate. I have successfully found the dedicated Shinkansen tracks here at Shinagawa Station. And they are very clearly marked, as you can see on the sign right there behind me. So these tracks are only for the Shinkansen trains, and that means that uh, this area here is a little bit limited. There doesn't seem to be any dedicated seating in this section of the station, and there are also not very many shops. And I did, of course, forget to bring something to eat for the train ride. Well, I'm sure there's a couple of different kiosks here, and I will be able to find something for the journey. Today I have a reserved green car ticket. The car number and the seat number are both printed on the ticket itself. Before you approach the track, make sure that you know your car number and then just follow the very helpful signs that are printed on the platform itself. Just stand in the indicated area, let the people exit the train first and just observe good queuing behavior that is very important in Japan. The Shinkansen trains run every three to five minutes, so really make sure that you are at the right departure. Check the time and the train number on your ticket. On board in the green car, the seats are laid out in a two plus two configuration. 
the configuration used in the ordinary car or a second class is 2 plus 3. Welcome aboard the Shinkansen. If I remember anything about my Japanese manners is that you should not speak on the train. So I'll do a voiceover for the rest of this review. In terms of the seat features in the green car, the first thing you will notice is the footrest. You can adjust the height of the footrest with the pedal on the right hand side. But you can also open the footrest and this open mode is only for use without shoes. And how do I know that? Well this time it's not because I made some terrible faux pas. Rather, I had help from a Japanese fellow traveler. He saw that I was filming came over and sat next to me and he told me about all the features of the green car which was amazing because some of the things that I'm about to show you are not obvious. Like this one. The floor in the green car has carpet whereas in the ordinary car it's just a plastic floor. I would have never noticed that if he hadn't told me. Here's another example. The bottom of the baggage shelf is transparent so you can see if you have a bag up there. On the right hand side I have the seat controls. This switch will adjust the recline and it works with a motor. Up in the ceiling there is an air nozzle that you can also adjust. On the left hand side of my seat there are two buttons. The bottom one is a seat warmer, how about that? And the top one is the control for the reading light. In this seat there are two tables that you can choose from. There's a big one right in front of you, a bit obviously. But there is also a second one, a smaller one inside the armrest. There is quite a lot of privacy in this seat thanks to these expansive headrests. As for the design, it is certainly not the most modern or beautiful at all. But the seat is certainly very comfortable and it's a nice and quiet ride. The green car is mostly used by business travelers. That's why it's so empty here on Saturday around midday. I picked this time for two reasons. Number one is that I wanted an empty car so that I wouldn't bother too many people with my camera. And the second reason why I chose a daytime train is for the views. On a clear day you can see Mount Fuji on this trip from Tokyo to Kyoto. Looking out at the scenery it's really relaxing cruising along at 285 kilometers per hour that's 177 miles per hour. Now let's check out the bathroom situation. To begin with there is a single urinal stall with a tiny sink. Just next to it on the outside there is a bigger sink over here. Then we have a separate full toilet, of course with a built-in bidet. Those Japanese bidets are a really good reason to go to Japan. This train is so clean and tidy that I walked over to the toilet in my happy socks. There's a link to these socks and all the other gear I use in the description below the video. Out in this vestibule area there is also baggage storage and trash cans. So far I've talked only about the hard product but what about the service on board? For all practical purposes there is none. All you get is a pre-packaged moist towel to wipe your hands at the beginning of the journey. There is no food or drink included in the ticket. The crew does come through with a small cart where you can buy drinks and snacks. So for food make sure to bring your own from the station. Here's mine. This is a wonderful bento box with fish and lots of little side dishes. I have no idea what half of these even are but they are all super yummy. Here are two more tips about food on the Shinkansen. Make sure that you're comfortable with chopsticks or bring something that you can eat with your hands. But don't bring fast food that's gonna stink up the train that's not done here. We are approaching Kyoto with arrival in approximately 20 minutes. This has been a very relaxing journey on the Shinkansen in the green car. And I would certainly recommend this for anybody who wants a comfy seat and a nice and quiet ride. As always the main distraction is the guy making a video. 
my detailed recommendation is coming up as we arrive in Kyoto. Hit the like button if you've gotten value from this video so far. Thank you for doing that. So is the green car or first class worth it on the Shinkansen? Well, on the one hand, this is not a luxury product. It's not comparable to first class or to business class on an international flight. There is no lounge access and there are no meals or drinks included. This is a purely utilitarian experience. The trains are always on time. They have a spotless safety record. The cabins are quiet and clean. But that is also the case in second class or ordinary car. On the other hand, you only pay about 40% more to travel in green car. It is less crowded and the seats do have more space and they are very comfortable. I have ridden the Shinkansen many times in both classes. For me, the slightly higher fare for the green car is indeed worth it. Click or tap the video on the screen now to find out how I got to Japan flying the Japanese airline ANA in business class. Thank you for watching Marcus Travels.